thank you uh, so today we'll be learning about uh, some of the diagnosis which is uh, most commonly encountered in the dermatology opd that is uh, scabies and pediculosis and i feel even as an mbbs doctor or, or even as a professional from any other uh, field this is something which uh, all of us should know and be aware of so we'll be uh, looking at these topics under uh, the following uh, headings let's go to the first topic that is uh, scabies so scabies is a very common public health problem especially in a developing country like ours Uh, it affects millions of people annually, and it is termed by the WHO as a neglected tropical tropical disease. It is a highly contagious ectoparasitic infection of the skin, which is caused by the human itch mite. But the scientific name for the mite which causes scabies is known as Sarcoptes scabies, and the particular strain which affects humans is known as Formicus. so this is something which uh, you may not remember the sub order is known as astigmata and the family is sarcoptidae just remember the name of the species is sarcoptes scabi uh, and the particular strain is hominis so uh, even though it is predominantly a disease of children it can affect people of all age groups all races and all social classes but the highest incidence and the highest prevalence is seen in very young children less than 2 years of age so the risk factors like i said it's common in a country like ours so you can imagine the risk factors to be overcrowding poor hygiene homelessness uh, high humidity low temperatures uh, any and it it is uh, very rampant in the family so even one particular member having scabies in the family can spread it to the entire family and there is also a seasonal variation which is noted that it is it is more in the winter and autumn seasons so uh, let's just study a very briefly about the morphology and how this mite actually looks so uh, the the scabies mite which infects us is usually the female mite which is bigger than the male mite so only a fertilized female can burrow into our skin and it usually burrows through the stratum corneum the rate if you are a postgraduate of dermatology listening in these uh, particular numerical factors are something which is often asked by the examiners the rate at which the scabies might burrows through the stratum corneum is 0.5 to uh, 5 mm per day and it lays about 150 to 180 eggs in its whole lifetime which lasts for 30 days so let's just see some images so this is a, a life cycle of a mite so you can see that the egg so once there is uh, sorry yeah so uh, the egg stage it undergoes it becomes the larva and the larva undergoes three um, could you say nymph stages so there is there are three stages after which it becomes the adult uh, mite So the female mite is much bigger than the male mite, and it is the fertilized female mite which burrows into the stratum corneum. So this you can see this is at the level of the stratum corneum that the mite is always present along with its eggs. So these are the these are some of the terms which uh, we should know or we should get to see in a case of scabies. That one is an adult and eggs. There is also another term which is known as sibala. So this is the fecal material. Of of the adult female mite, this is known as a sibala. Okay. Yeah, and the mites are present in certain areas of the skin. Um, so that I'll come to that later. What are the areas of predilection in which a scabies mite can be found? Again, these numerical terms are important if you're a first graduate. The, there is a human. patient with uh, scabies harbors around 10 to 12 mites at a time but if there are certain variants of scabies uh, particularly something known as norwegian scabies in which the patient is extensively colonized by the scabies mite and there the number may go up to 2 million so we'll talk about norwegian scabies later um so it lives like i said the uh, the life cycle lasts for about 30 days 
but it needs a certain temperature uh, and a certain area of the human body outside the body it can survive only for about 1 to 2 days so how is scabies transmitted uh, scabies is usually transmitted by close person to person contact which is why it usually spreads in the families occasionally it is uh, spread by our fomites also uh, and in adults scabies is a sexually transmitted disease it uh, the particular species like the species which i spoke about earlier sarcoptes scabi var hominis that cannot be transferred by pets and animals there is another variant of scabies which is known as animal scabies the particular mite infesting cats and dogs uh, causing scabies is different and that cannot be transmitted to us okay, so why is it important for us to know the methods of transmission of any disease because it is important when it comes to the management aspect uh, treatment the one thing which we advise patients of scabies is to wash all their bedding wash all their clothing keep it in hot water <clears throat> hang it properly dry it properly so that is important to prevent the transmission of scabies by a fomites coming to the clinical features the incubation period is very variable it can last from 5 days up to 3 weeks so there is intense itching predominantly at night so uh, some people do ask why is the itching of scabies more at night so there are multiple reasons but there is no specific reasons a particular reason or there are no actual uh, you know studies or research which show why the itching of scabies is uh, more intense at night some of the hypotheses are that you know you are busy throughout the day so at night uh, your <clears throat> that is the time when you usually Uh, sit down and relax. So that is when we notice that the in, uh, itching is more intense. That is one of the more common sense reasons. The other uh, reason is that uh, the scabies female might it comes out to feed particularly uh, at night. So that is again one of the reasons. So just remember that nocturnal itching is the main symptom of patient with scabies. Sorry. sorry yeah nocturnal itching is what is to be remembered so this <clears throat> we can see this is a picture showing a adult female mite so uh, some some people might ask you to recognize what is a scabies mite how do you differentiate it from a, a louse these are the two <clears throat> uh, microbiology factors which come into play in dermatology a uh, mite a scabies mite and a louse a louse is something which causes pediculosis so i'll show you the structure of a louse later also but this is how a scabies might looks coming to the clinical signs what are the clinical signs which are present in scabies there is no primary lesion in scabies so um, i don't know that all of you know about what a primary and a secondary lesion is so in dermatology primary lesions are um, macule papule a patch plaque <clears throat> these are some of the primary lesions and secondary lesions are something which are not specific to the condition and they usually arise because of itching and so they are excoriations uh, crust scales these are all the secondary lesions and there are some special lesions special lesions for example burrows so scabies is a condition where you can find primary secondary and special lesion so the primary lesion is a papule or a papular vesicular lesion uh, the secondary lesions are excoriations and the special lesion is a burrow so uh, to explain each term excoriation is something which happens due to intense itching so that you can find it all over the body of a patient with scabies and burrows are the pathognomonic lesion of scabies so it is defined as a, a serpentine thread like grayish or dark line which is approximately 5 mm long and it is found specially where the stratum corneum is thin so like i said before these are the areas where you have to look or specifically in a patient when you suspecting scabies that is finger webs breast axilla uh, in a female patient areola uh, umbilicus lower part of the abdomen genitalia very important to examine in a male patient or a child and buttocks so if you can sort of draw all these in an uh, 
we just store suppose okay this is just imagine that okay so this you're drawing the finger web the axilla so it sort of goes around like this axilla umbilicus lower part of the abdomen and the genitalia so this is known as a, it's just an imaginary circle it's not exactly a circle it is known as the circle of hebra so in adults uh, yeah the areas where it is spared so like i said in adults it spares the face in the scalp why why does it uh, spare the face in the scalp because there are there is a high density of sebaceous unit or pilosebaceous unit in uh, over our face and scalp that is why it usually spares but in infants it involves the entire body the two terms which you need to know here are burrow is the pathognomonic lesion and the circle of fibra and so this you can see a, a patient of scabies will characteristically have uh, itching over the web spaces so the arrows here so these are the mites very difficult to make out but if you are an experienced practitioner you can make it out this is the head of the mite followed by the other structure so this is the mite very difficult to make out okay yeah next we'll move on to the type uh, types of uh, scabies so these are some specific uh, what we studied about was just general scabies how it usually presents the general population so there are some um, specific types there is something known as scabies in children so like i said the differentiating point here what we need to remember here in scabies in children is that it infects the face also the face is also involved the entire body is involved this is and yeah one more important thing is in children face arms and soles are involved in children <clears throat> whereas in adults usually there is sparing of the face and arms and soles so nodular scabies is a very specific variant of scabies where you can find nodular lesions specifically over the genitalia so why is it important is because the treatment aspect differs a little bit in nodular scabies nodular scabies usually doesn't respond only to the typical anti scabetic medication and it usually requires some uh, steroid in some form so we can either inject a uh, Uh, intralesional steroid into the nodule or give a potent topical steroid usually <clears throat> there is another variant known as bullous scabies so <clears throat> this is also a variant whereas usually like i said the primary lesion in scabies is a papule or a papulo vesicle so these lesions can sometimes get bigger and bigger and th that that is when it is known as bullous scabies and there is another variant known as scabies in spleen so like i said scabies usually happens in uh, <clears throat> people who are uh, who live in unhygienic conditions overcrowding lack of personal hygiene so that is that is the usual scenario of scabies but there is a variant known as scabies in spleen that is uh, we are getting to see more cases of scabies in spleen i'm sure all of you have heard of something called the hygiene hypothesis which was usually applicable to uh, conditions like atopic dermatitis and autoimmune conditions but now it is becoming more and more applicable even to infectious diseases so that is one of the reasons uh, because of uh, limited exposure to the outside environment and the outside allergens that we are getting to see even infectious diseases in Uh, the higher socio-economic class. So there is a just remember that there is something known as scabies in clean. Uh, the next very important variant is Norwegian scabies, which is also known as crusted scabies. So uh, unfortunately, I don't have an image. Uh, okay, yeah, I do have an image. So this this was a patient of Norwegian scabies. Norwegian scabies is very difficult to diagnose. It usually presents as erythroderma. so erythroderma is any skin condition involving more than 90% of the body surface area so <clears throat> when a patient presents like this scabies is the last thing that anybody will think of there are a hundred important other common causes of erythroderma so uh, uh, i just want to uh, emphasize the point that scabies especially if okay yeah so let's talk about some of the conditions where uh 
so where we suspect norwegian scabies so norwegian scabies is suspected in very elderly immunocompromised say that includes hiv uh, any sort of malignancy any post organ transplant patients so these are the two conditions and uh, yeah mentally retarded okay we're not to use the term anymore i'm sorry mentally challenged patients Uh, including downs or uh, cerebral palsy so these are the conditions so if you see any of these scenarios where a person presents to you with uh, extensive excoriations on the body then we have to always suspect norwegian scabies or crested scabies um uh yeah uh, if you are um, you know thinking about from the mcq point of view the usual scenario which they give is uh an elderly patient coming from an old age home so that is the usual scenario which they give for norwegian scabies there are outbreaks of norwegian scabies in old age homes okay and the other thing which we have to remember about norwegian scabies is characteristically and it is paradoxic that uh there is no itching in these patient which is very surprising very paradoxical that is a thing which we have to remember there is no itching scabies is a condition one of the few conditions in dermatology in which there is intense itching and the patient starts itching right in front of you cannot sit even for a minute the other some of the other conditions in dermatology which cause intense itching are urticaria um, renal pruritus cholestatic pruritus some systemic conditions and scabies is one of those conditions but in norwegian scabies there is absence of itching so again uh, there are lot of hypothesis why there is absence of itching because they say that the specific population in which norwegian scabies occur already have a lessened uh, you know degree of sensation yeah i forgot to add one more thing uh, in leprosy okay uh, so you are not supposed to say leprosy anymore i hope uh, all of you know that you are supposed to call it hansens Don't say leprosy anymore. Always say Hansen's disease. So these are the conditions where um, the either the sensations or the neurological system is somewhat already depressed. So that is why you don't get itching in Norwegian scabies. And the other point which we studied earlier, I hope all of you remember this point: the number of mites in Norwegian scabies is something which gets asked all the time. Is two million. and the average in a normal person with scabies the number of mites are 10 to 12 whereas in norwegian scabies it is 2 million okay so we read about the uh, predisposing factors the risk factors for norwegian scabies and the characteristic absence of itching and uh, i'll also tell you in the further slides the treatment of norwegian scabies also differs so here you can see very thick these are very thick hyperkeratotic lesions these are not the typical lesions of scabies the typical lesions of scabies are papules of papillovesicles and these are very thick hyperkeratotic plaques so the normal typical anti scabetic creams or lotions which we usually prescribe for the patient do not work here and they usually require something which is known as a keratolytic i will be telling you about this in the future slide they require something known as keratolytic keratolytic is something which thins out the stratum corneum so they usually require keratolytic to make the hyperkeratotic plaques thin so that the anti scabetic drugs can penetrate okay uh, yeah then uh, there are two other types of uh, scabies that which we need to know uh, something known as scabies incognito so uh, any incognito what is incognito incognito is something which cannot be recognized like the typical features are not present so there are a lot of incognito terms in dermatology there is tinea incognito syphilis incognito scabies incognito so any disease can present in an incognito way where you cannot recognize the typical symptoms and usually usually the most common reason for incognito presentation is use of topical corticosteroids steroid 
steroid use is usually why most of the diseases in dermatology present in an incognito mode. Yeah, uh, steroids are used in a majority of conditions in dermatology, but doesn't mean that every condition needs to be treated with steroids. This usually, uh, what it does is it brings down the inflammation, but it doesn't treat the underlying disease process and also hides the typical signs and symptoms of the disease, so which is very misleading when the patient comes to an actual dermatologist later on. This is scabies incognito. And the last one is animal transmitted scabies. So animal transmitted scabies, like I said, the, the species or the subspecies is different. Usually affects um, stray dogs or uh, stray cats. And uh, if your immunity is very low, like I said, in all these conditions. Again, the same conditions apply to animal transmitted scabies also. Normally, in a healthy uh, human, animal scabies would not transfer to a human being. But if your immunity is down, if you have an immunosuppressive condition, it can transmit. So these are the clinical types. So this, um, yeah, this is a picture of uh, Norwegian scabies. And the second one, you can see here, this is a picture of nodular scabies. You can see the, and nodular scabies usually affects the genetic So these are the typical nodules of scabies. This is, again, this image is not very nodular. Nodular scabies has even thicker and bigger nodules, which the anti-scabitic drugs don't penetrate. And this is one of the scenarios where uh, intralesional steroid can be given in nodular scabies. Now, oh, there are certain complications um, to a majority extent, scabies doesn't cause any sort of systemic complications, but very rarely it can, the systemic complication it can cause is glomerulonephritis. That is something which we have to remember. That, is, that uh, is, happens when scabies is secondarily infected by a bacteria like streptococcus. So then it can cause post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Scabies, as such, does not cause glomerulonephritis. Secondary bacterial infection of a scabies lesion. Let me just show an image. Yeah. So this was a patient who had scabies and these very uh, recurrent boils on the hand. He was treated with uh, recurrent, uh, just uh, you know, clean antibiotics, oral and topical antibiotics, but he kept on getting these recurrent. Lesion. So the underlying condition here is scabies. If you can closely examine his web spaces, all his web spaces are involved. Always uh, invo examine the web spaces in a patient who presents with acute onset of intense itching, generalized itching, nocturnal itching, a family history of itching. These are all the conditions where you have to look in the finger webs. Um, so yeah, this was a patient of scabies with a secondary bacterial infection. So when that happens, then the patient can sometimes develop post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. And again, vasculitis is a very, very rare complication, very unheard of. The local complications which can develop due to the intense itching and excoriation are alteration and impetigenization. Okay, yeah. Um, there is no specific investigation necessary for the diagnosis of scabies. It is a clinical diagnosis, but um, if you are not sure of the diagnosis, especially we do a, a microscopic examination of the mite in patients with Norwegian scabies because that is a scenario in which you are unsure of the diagnosis and you have to look for the mite or the egg or the sibara, like I said, which is the fecal matter under a microscope. So how do we do a demonstration uh, of the egg or the mite under a microscope? I had a video. Okay. Um, you can uh, YouTube it or uh, you'll find a lot of videos on YouTube, I think, that how do you demonstrate, how do you take a scraping of a mite? So what you usually do is, you um, lay the patient's hand flat on a table. You apply a drop of liquid paraffin in between the fingers. And then you take a, a number five, number 15 uh, scalpel and you take the blunt end of it. And you start gently scraping at the 
spot where you have applied the liquid paraffin so that you get some material you smear that on a glass slide and you observe it under the microscope that is usually how a smear of uh skibi smite is made if you are a postgraduate in dermatology they'll usually ask you to demonstrate or this is one of the things which uh, you should know so uh, like i said i showed you an image of the skibi smite that is how it usually appears under a microscope serological tests are all very theoretical specific ige antibodies uh, recombinant rsr pcr all these are very theoretical so what we do in clinical practice other than demonstration of the mite under microscope is something known as dermoscopy so dermoscope is an instrument which is like a mag magnified uh, lens or like a microscope which is utilized to view structures there are two signs so this can be important from an mcq point of view also if you post graduate there are two uh, dermoscopy signs in uh, skibi so this get very difficult to make out this is the head of the mite and this is the this is its body and there are egg uh, if you can sort of imagine it there are egg casing casting inside that and this is the fecal material which is this is the fecal material which is left by the mite this is so uh, this is known as a jet with contrail sign so jet with contrail is like sort of an aeroplane which uh, you know leaves behind uh, uh, which leaves behind a stream of white line of smoke behind it that is a jet with contrail so you have to have a lot of imagination that is one sign the other sign is a hang glider sign so this is the body of the uh, scabies this is the body of the scabies mite and this is something like a hang glider that is known as a hang glider sign again a lot of imaginary things remember hang glider sign and uh, jet with contrail sign are the two named signs on thermoscopy in scabies yeah so this is the microscopic image of a scabies mite the first image i already showed you the second image these are the eggs these are the eggs and this this small thing this is the sebala this is the fecal matter the differential comes the differential diagnosis scabies is usually a very straight forward diagnosis if uh, like i said the classical history the classical examination findings the history points which you need to ask the patient is um nocturnal itching a family history of itching and the size and on examination you look for the finger uh, spaces so look for the wrist the axilla the genitalia lower part of the abdomen and thighs so these are the usual areas so it is usually a pretty straightforward diagnosis but some of the um in in especially in infants we need to rule out things like there is something called as infantile acropustulosis papular urticaria so again these are all very big terms so just remember uh, no need to remember a lot of things just remember insect bite reaction or atopic dermatitis these are all extremely pruritic conditions okay um crusted scabies is something which uh, has a lot of dds because crusted scabies is not a straight forward diagnosis it has thick hyperkeratotic plaque so the differential diagnosis would be eczema psoriasis seborrheic dermatitis um no need to remember everything on this slide just know that uh, you will have to think about a few more things if you don't see the typical sign signs of scabies and you can always do a scraping or you know a thing um, demonstration of the mite under the microscope if you are unsure whether it is scabies or not that is a very simple technique yeah, coming to the treatment aspect this this is the most important part of scabies because out of um, out of a majority of the patient almost 90% of them do not follow what we usually uh, tell them they do not apply the medications in a correct manner and that is leading to the 
स्प्रेड और द अकरेंस ऑफ रेसिस्टेंस के बी सो रेसिस्टेंट के बीज इज अनादर न्यू टाइप ऑफ टर्मिनोलॉजी विच इज कमिंग अप नाउ डेज परमेथ्रिन रेसिस्टेंस बिकॉज द पेशेंट्स डोंट फॉलो वॉट वी से दे डो नॉट अप्लाई द मेडिकेशन टू द प्रॉपर वे सो स्पेंडिंग a uh, time with the skebies patient and counseling them regarding how to apply the medication what are the general treatment guidelines which we need to follow are two very very important things and um, this is something which all of us should know so the general guidelines are treat the patient along with everyone who lives with him irrespective of whether the other family members have itching they don't have itching whether they have symptoms or they are asymptomatic treat all of them we have to give a blanket treatment to all the family members uh, and uh, like i also said scabies can also be sexually transmitted so treat the recent sexual partner also along with the family members uh, <clears throat> you have to counsel the patient that topicals have to be applied to the whole body below the neck over a clean and dry skin and rub so what we usually advise them is have bath dry your skin properly and massage uh, the cream below your neck over your entire body so this is something which has to be specifically repeated to the patient permethrin does not work if it is applied only over the lesion it has to be applied to the whole body and in infants and children like i said face is the area which is commonly involved so the face must also be included all clothes worn along with the bed sheet the pillows and the bed linen should be washed in hot water the temperature there some people might ask you of 50 degrees celsius and sunrise in the morning this is to prevent the spread of scabies by fomites um you should ask them to avoid touching mucosa uh, okay and then uh, ask to report after one week or usually 10 days is what we usually tell them so yeah so these are the general guidelines coming to the uh, specific therapy which we give permethrin 5% cream or a 5% lotion is the treatment of choice in scabies so it is the most widely used drug it is safe uh, in children of all age groups even as young as 2 months of old i um, give permethrin in even in very young babies as old as 1 week of age also Uh, it is safe in pregnant women also overnight application is necessary repeat the application after 10 days so this is uh, usually true for most of the anti scabetic ask the patient to apply uh, permethrin all over the body at night and tell them that there has to be a contact period of at least 8 to 10 hours and they can wash off or have bath the next morning and they need to repeat the application after 10 days so there is a lot of controversy about why this 10 days some people say 7 days some people say repeated after 14 days this has uh, got to do with the life cycle of the scabies mite so how many days so uh, let's just go back to the life cycle of the scabies mite if you remember right so if you can count from this so this is Two to three days, okay. Three to four days, four to seven days. So it this usually come comes up to um, five, six, and eight, eight to fifteen days. So doesn't really matter. So this is so that the the all the stages of the scabies might is eradicated right from the egg to the larva to the adult stage. So this is why we ask them to repeat. Uh, the drug after a certain period of time and it's better that we do it after the maximum period so 14 days what i usually ask them to reply uh, apply reapply it after 2 weeks so that we make sure that we get all the mites right the cure uh, rate is very high almost 100% the only uh, reason why permethrin wouldn't work is because the patient has not applied it properly or very rarely nowadays as it's been seen permethrin resistant resistance so the side effects are very minimal um sometimes can cause irritant contact dermatitis uh, the mechanism of action is that it um it uh, 
inhibits the sodium transport channel in the mite and it causes a neuroparalysis in the mite so lindine or <laughs> gamma benzene hexachloride was this uh, nobody uses this nowadays it was used before um, and it ha also has a high cure rate um, and the application has to be repeated after a week so it is a neurotoxic agent it acts on the cns of the mite leading to convulsions and death. um we usually don't use it anymore because the i have seen a lot of cases lindane uh, comes as a it comes as a uh, uh, lotion it comes like an oil or a lotion form which usually looks like a syrup and uh, i have seen a lot of kids presenting as a eg presenting to the uh, ed or the casualty because the parents have given uh, lindane to the child by mouth they think that it's a syrup and they have made the child drink it so lindane is a neurotoxic agent so the child has you know i've even seen a child go into coma and die because of this mistake so uh, counseling is very very important here to make sure that so these are things which we think is very simple who would confuse this for a syrup but it actually happened and we need to uh, look at it from the patient's point of view from the patient's perspective treat them as people who have no they actually don't have any knowledge about this and we need to tell them everything right from a to z okay so uh, again not used anymore because we have a um, better drug for it all these are again agents which are not really used in clinical practice protamiton is something which uh, is used because it also has an anti fluoritic uh, action Do you remember these names? Benzyl, benzoate, twenty-five uh, percent, protamiton, ten percent. Yeah, and nowadays there is uh, ivermectin, uh, topical ivermectin preparations also, topical creams and topical solutions. But um, it is not, uh, it is uh, contraindicated or it is not approved for use in children below twelve years. Uh, not exactly five years, below twelve years of age. Sulfur again, it's an older drug. Sulfur, lindane, all these are very old drugs nowadays. Permethrin is the topical drug of choice, and the oral drug of choice. Yeah, when we come to that, the we also give ivermectin as systemic therapy. So ivermectin was is a very old drug, which was used initially for uh, onchocerciasis or for schizophrenia. So nowadays, uh, also must know. I was mentioned because it was used rampantly during COVID also. So the mechanism of action is it blocks the glutamate-gated chloride channel. So this is something which I remember. Permethrin blocks the sodium channel, whereas I was mentioned blocks the chloride channel. So uh, like I said, it's not used in children below fifteen years, and the dose is two uh, hundred microgram per kg per dose. so it comes as a 6 mg or it 12 mg tablet the dose uh, is 200 microgram per kg and you can give a single dose or you can give two doses 15 days apart and support of therapy is very important in scabies because permethrin and ivermectin will not take care of the itching that is to do with the main pathology of the disease so we all need to give the patient and antihistamic always for 2 to 3 weeks you we also give need to give emollient and soothing agents um for persistent nodular lesions like i said intralesional steroid and if you think that there is uh, icd contact dermatitis because of the uh, because of application of permethrin or a lot of excoriations everywhere then very uh, short durations of topical corticosteroids are also given yeah so this is treatment of crusted scabies like i said keratolytic agents so these are some examples of keratolytic agents salicylic acid urea must be given and you generally give permethrin plus ivermectin um methotrexate very rarely given so the some of the other things which uh, we should advise the patient counsel the patient is 
the nails the nails must also be treated this is one aspect which everybody forgets to mention the nails have to be cut and brushed with the scabicide agent antibiotics again if you think that there is a secondary infection uh, you give antibacterial agents like uh, cetrimide or chlorhexamide Uh, so this, this is again uh, the general measures. Um, all the contacts must be treated, even if they are asymptomatic. So usually, preferably treat them on the same day or at the same time. Avoid direct skin-to-skin -skin contact. The bedding clothing must be washed during three days before treatment or after. Uh, the room should be thoroughly cleaned and vacuum cleaned. So all these are uh, scenarios where most of the Indian population do not follow, but uh, make sure that you emphasize that they at least wash their clothes, which they've worn from the past three days and the bedding which they use. It's not possible to vacuum clean the rooms in, uh, you know, scenarios like this. Okay, this was about uh, scabies. So uh, just to recap, we read about um, the mite sarcoptic scabi how it looks like what is the life cycle of the mite um what are the modes of transmission of scabies what are the classical signs what are the symptoms what is what is a burrow what is circle of hebra what are the uh, variants of scabies scabies in infants scabies in clean animal scabies nodular scabies uh crusted scabies or norwegian scabies okay and we also read about what are the complications of scabies and uh, in the treatment part, what are the general measures that we have to always advise the patients? What is the topical treatment to be given? What is the systemic treatment to be given? How do you manage a case of Norwegian scabies? Uh, how to manage nodular scabies? What are the supportive treatment to be given? So these are all the things which, uh, just to summarize what we read in scabies. Now moving on to the next uh, topic, pediculosis. The so pediculosis is... Uh, in layman terms, it is lice. So there are three species which commonly affect humans. The head lice, the body lice, or the pubic lice. So uh, the head louse, louse is the singular form, whereas lice is the plural. So the head louse is also known as pediculosis humanus capitis. Uh, the body louse is called corporis and the Pubic louses, the, the species is different. So it's not pediculus, it's thyrus pubis. It's also known as crab. So you might have heard of uh, people uh, in uh, TV shows, American and British TV shows, saying that they got the crabs. So crabs is nothing but pubic lice. And this is a sexually transmitted disease. Okay, so I'm sure this image will give all of you the creepy crawlies. So this is how a head lice, a head louse and a body louse and a crab louse looks like. The body louse, just remember that the body louse is short compared to the head and the, the sorry, the pubic louse or the crab louse is small compared to the uh, head and body louse. Okay, so um, again, how is it transmitted? Head louse is uh, very common in children because of head-to-head -head contact, sharing tools, brushes and hats. I'm sure all of you must have undergone or seen or faced an epidemic of uh, lice uh, when you were kids in school. Uh, the head louse or the head lice is the commonest form of pediculosis. So body louse and pubic louse are serious infections. A head lice is a very simple infection, which all, all of us must have contracted at some point. But a body louse and a pubic louse are pretty serious infections. You have to see that, you have to figure out what is wrong if uh, you see a patient with a body louse or a pubic louse. So again, all three of these conditions happen because of poor hygiene and unsanitary conditions. Pubic louse or crab louse is also uh, transmitted sexually. And no need to remember all the very specific details. Just remember that the pubic louse looks like a crab, which is why it's known as a uh, crab louse. It has a short and a wide body. 
uh, again, the females, the fertilized females, which uh, in fact, the incubation period here is a little longer than in scabies, it's around a month. The clinical features are intense itching. That is the only clinical feature. Which is, let me just show you an image. So this is a child who presented with head lice. So what you can see here, there is the eggs are also known as nits. And sometimes you can see even live lice just crawling around there. So these are all the nits, the white um, oval things which you can see on the shaft are called as nits. So intense itching is the clinical manifestation. And if you just have a look into the scalp, you can instantly make the diagnosis because you actually see live lice crawling on there. Okay, so um, secondary pyoderma can happen in any condition. That is a secondary bacterial infection. So uh, the favored sites are behind the ear and the occiput. Occiput is the most common region which is involved. And usually there is cervical lymphadenopathy. So why is there cervical lymphadenopathy? As a part of an inflammatory process. We see cervical lymphadenopathy in a lot of scalp conditions which happen in children. So most commonly pediclosis and also in tinea. Tinea capitis is fungal infection of the scalp. So this is again a condition where you see cervical lymphadenopathy. Why is it important? Because you need not do anything proactively about the cervical lymphadenopathy. I have seen a lot of practitioners, um, you know, give antibiotics, try to aspirate that, try to find out what is the underlying reason, do a lot of blood tests, but it's, nothing is required. Just know that it is an inflammatory reaction to the pathology which is happening in the head. So once you treat that infection, the cervical lymphadenopathy will come down on its own. Pediculosis corporis, like I said, it is known as vagabond disease. So um, I hope all of you know the meaning of the term vagabond. So it usually doesn't happen in normal people. It happens in extremely unhygienic and unhygienic and unsanitary conditions. Um, pediculosis subpubis. Here you can see uh, the crab louse or the pyrus pubis or pubic louse which is attached to the base of the hair, of the pubic hair. Uh, let me just show you an image. Oh, yeah, so here you can see black specks like thing. This is actually the louse. This is actually like, a, it looks like a crab, right? So this is the crab louse, which is attached to the base of the shaft, which looks like black specks. So it looks like black speck like bodies. And uh, the, the other specific term, which you would remember here is mac maculae cerulea, which are uh, bluish macules, which result from cutaneous hemorrhages. So maculae cerulea and black specks, speck like bodies are the two findings which you can see in pubic claws. Yeah, so this, this is an image of head louse and this is pubic claws. This is again head louse. This is again head louse here. Um, again, all these are nits, nits, cannot see a live, all these are nits. And this is body louse, okay? This is vagabond's disease. So if you don't know, vagabond is usually, a, it's a very derogatory term, which is not supposed to be used anymore. It is something um, which is used to address a homeless person. So have to suspect uh, body lies in such scenarios. Again, not used anymore, very derogatory. Remember that uh, nobody says leprosy. You should not be using the term leprosy in dermatology anymore. We should be saying Hansen's. Like I said, again, vagabond, vagabond's disease not to be used. And this is very briefly uh, come to the treatment. Uh, the, the, the drugs are almost very similar. What is used in clinical practice most commonly is permethrin. Remember the concentration. The concentration was 5% in scabies, whereas it is 1% in um, pediculosis. So how do you uh, advise the patient to apply this? It comes in a lotion form or as a shampoo base. Um, you ask them to apply it and 
rinse it after 10 minutes if it's a shampoo if you are asking them to apply the lotion ask them to keep it overnight like same as in the case of scabies but if you are using a shampoo then they have to wash it off after 10 minutes and repeat after uh, one week again the other thing is malathion carbaryl are all very outdated treatments not used anymore remember 1% permethrin and also over oral ivermectin the same as we use in scabies 200 microgram per kg body weight is what is used the other things some uh, just remember the names malathion spinosad dimethicon not used topical ivermectin is uh, upcoming nowadays because of resistance to permethrin otherwise permethrin is the treatment of choice yeah so for pediculosis for body lice um washing and rinsing all the clothes followed by ironing the seam so the seams seam is something which uh, is the end of a collar is the end of a collar or the end of your sleeve so that is known as a seam so you have to particularly advise them to hot iron the seams so how do you physically remove the lice so what we usually advise is i the most common population which i see is young uh, children with head lice so if possible the best scenario is you ask them to shave shave their head shave off all the hair if it is a female child that is not possible so what you advise them is you repeatedly apply liquid paraffin or petrol atom then remove the lice with a lice comb so there is something known as a lice comb which comes with very fine comb so that is a lice comb so you ask them to comb and apply with this uh, remove the lice with this or with tweezers so again contacts should be checked and treated like in the case of scabies it is not necessarily necessary to empirically treat all the contacts only the symptomatic ones must be treated let's just briefly go through some very easy questions the scabies which show uh, presence with involvement of face palm and sole is infantile scabies uh, the complication of infected scabies this is very important nobody will ask you the complication of scabies if they ask you complication of scabies it is secondary infection pyoderma excoriations the complication of infected scabies is post streptococcal glomerulonephritis how many species of lice affect human so is it three okay so that was uh, all about today's lecture so you can uh, look me up on instagram or uh, uh, leave your queries on the white army page and if you want me to do take up any specific class this is my email id you can uh, write to me uh, thank you all for your patient listening yeah thank you ma'am Yeah. Man, there is one question. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, she asked there. Uh, ben, ben, benzyl benzyl application. It is used just like permethrin. Um, uh, I can't hear you. What is the uh, what? Ah, man. Ah, she asked there. A benzyl benzyl application. It is used just like permethrin. Bed. Ah, uh, bedzyl ben application. Ben you. Huh? Yeah, man. Yes. Then. Ah, uh, I, I, I can't hear what you're saying in the initial part. Is it used like permethrin? Is all I'm able to hear. What? How? What are you saying before that? Like just like permethrin, like application. Ah, uh, 